Welcome to the Fantasy Football Fiend Podcast with your hosts Zay, Young Vander, and Bro Joe. Welcome back to the best fantasy football podcast on the air, the Fantasy Football Fiend Podcast, presented to you by Manscaped. I'm your Jose, the Fantasy Football Fiend himself. As always, I got my guys with me. Highlight the people, Young Vander. Fantasy Fiends, what's going on out there? And my guy, Bro Joe, holla at him. What's going on, Fantasy Fiend family? Yo, we have an extraordinary show for you today. We'll go a little bit over, you know, injuries, updates, things of that nature. Get you ready for week two. Make sure that you uh, have your start sit questions answered, asked and answered. Uh, some of those that were sent to us in our rapid fire 10. Make sure that you subscribe to us on YouTube. And if you haven't joined the Fantasy Football Fiend Family Facebook group, make sure that you do that as well. Definitely pertinent information that's going to help you get through your season. Uh, some of which is a little bit more in depth that we can't get through within the entirety of the show. But make sure that you go to both of those spots to join us, to our loyal listeners. And let's go ahead and get us started with the news. And now your fantasy news. All right. So we have several players that are limited. That's kind of par for the course. Uh, Not many that are going to have fantasy implications. Some of them that um, had injuries prior to the season starting, they're still going to be on the injury report and they're not going to practice in full. And that's normally when you get that limited tag. So um, we'll go through a few of these guys and then uh, Vander and Brojo kind of let us know if they think that it's a little bit more to it. Uh, with a few of these guys than what they are with others. But number one on the list, at quarterback, Jimmy G, ankle, limited in practice on Wednesday. Is this something to worry about? I know Jimmy G kind of stays nicked up, and he's had an ankle injury. I think that might have been what kind of knocked him out last year. So is this just par for the course based on injury that he already had, or does this kind of worry you just a little bit? No, not worried. Uh, I think he'll be suiting up Sunday. Anthony Richardson is not on the injury report. So his knee um, injury that happened at the end of last week, the game last week, uh, obviously wasn't that significant. Um, The most significant of injuries, Aaron Rodgers is on injured reserves, uh, Achilles. And I don't, I don't know if that's an injury that a 40 year old is going to be able to come back from and be spry enough to give it a go this time next year um is this it fair i think it'd be a personal call um as far as him coming back i think he's it's a, he's able to i mean let's face it he's not a running back he's not a four three wide receiver i mean he's a pocket passing quarterback i mean with very minimal mobility at this age so uh a torn achilles i mean it's it's usually one of those injuries that's harder to come back from right one time, but in today's game, being at the position he plays, I think it's easier for him to come back versus a running back, a wide receiver, a corner, some of that nature. So, Joe, how you feel about Zach Wilson? Um, right now, Robert Sala is saying that Zach Wilson is going to be the man for the rest of the year. Do you think that that's just tongue in cheek and it's just that we don't have anybody else in the building right now, or do you think they're actually going to run with him? I think they are. Um, just for the sole fact is, 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 is yeah or nay, I'm going to get the first overall pick, or are you going to take us to the playoffs? Are you you already got value and so much invested into them. I think the other side of it is you plan for next year with, with a good group of quarterbacks coming out, a very impressive group of mm-hmm. quarterbacks coming out. It might tilt the hand as to that being a possibility, but I think Aaron's going to come back. Uh, looking at even the post he made on Instagram, with the quote from uh, the Dark Knight Rises, man, I mean, I think he want to come back. He wants to come back to at least play one more year. I think that's in his spirit to do so. But Zach, uh, I'll pass on I'll say anything else about that. Real quick, I think I'm gonna bring somebody in. Um, okay. This, this team is built to win now. They're not thinking right. of tanking or Caleb Williams or Shador Sanders or May. They're not thinking about nobody like that. They're trying to win now. This team is built to win now. You bring in all these different free agents, yes. um, the Dalvin Cooks or whatever the world, like they're here to win now. So I think, of course, you know, the coach, he's supposed to say that because that's the guy that's in the building. But we've seen this movie before. We know what he offers. I mean, hell, the dude lost his job to like Mike White, right? 
So mm-hmm. with that being said, I mean, um, I think they'll reach out to a couple of veterans. Maybe it's next week. Um, you know, maybe some Nick Foles of the world, maybe there's some trades, some Tyler Henneke's of the world, uh, maybe even a Gardner. Yeah. Gardner Minshew would be a nice little ad for this team, I think, as far as uh, leading them. Um, hell, you may even see a Phillip Rivers call. Who knows? My my first thought was uh, Jameis Winston. Um, but th- there's several guys that are out there. I think, honestly, it's going to really depend on what he does this week. If he goes out there and stinks up the joint, they're going to be making some serious phone calls versus just trying to get somebody in there, you know, to back him up. But uh, Raheem Mostart was absent from practice uh, due to a knee injury. Is this more of the same or should we not really pay attention to it at this moment? I mean, they're, that they're saying it's a vet rest day. So, okay. Uh, but again, it's most of it, right? So that part, anything can happen. You know, this dude, he falls in the kitchen. And get hurt. <laughs> who knows what you know? Who knows? Who knows? Austin Eckler missed practice. He has an ankle injury, and there's also something personal going on with him. Um, but he didn't make practice on Wednesday. Also, this past week, his well, I'll, I'll still call him his backup, but uh, Kelly ended up getting just as much run as Eckler did, if not more. So, in this offense, it looks like it's going to be um a not necessarily a committee, more of a two-headed monster type of approach. Uh, Eckler was no worse for the wear as far as fantasy was concerned. It actually may keep him a little bit healthier, a little bit more spry as far as uh, being able to do what he does throughout the game. But do we think this is anything to write home about as far as Eckler is concerned, Vander? Now, this one I think is a little more serious. Um, Okay. I think this could be something that lingers – so definitely, I, I like Kelly. You know, I like Kelly before the season started just because of who the OC was. Um, but I would be, a, you know, I think Kelly was a hot waiver um, at this this past week. Yeah, definitely. So and uh, if you and if you're already an Eckler owner, I mean, you probably want to have this guy anyway. Yeah. But, uh, I, sure. think th- I think this one could, could go up to more. Uh, let's watch Friday. Let's see if he practices on Friday. I think that'd be more telling. James Conner turned into a calf injury. Um, don't exactly know how hurt he is, but he was limited in Wednesday's practice. Normally, if they show up to Wednesday's practice, even in a limited capacity, they, you can kind of, you know, count on them to go unless there's a setback. But another guy that's often injured, um, a couple of guys back to full participation, Cordero Patterson, Zach Moss coming back from that broken arm. Um, now, Thursday night football. Gainwell has been uh, pronounced that he's going to be out. He's He's been ruled out. So you have Rashad Penny and DeAndre Swift. The coach said, uh, Coach Nick Seriani said that Swift is going to be the guy who's in line for the majority of the work. Um, how do we feel as far as Gainwell is concerned? Is uh, Once Swift gets this opportunity, do we think that Gainwell will be given the opportunity again? Because for my money, Swift is the best running back on the roster. Um, You can, you know, put Penny in there sparingly, so that way at least you have a couple of bodies. But uh, neither one of them need to get a full load because they they tend to get nicked up quite a bit, um, both Penny and Swift. But um, how how are you looking at that combination of running backs? Well, I mean, I think this is an opportunity. And if Swift goes out, plays well, I think this spells trouble for Gainwell. Um, Seriani seems like the type he's gonna stick with the hot hand per se. Um, so Makes sense. I think Penny will be activated, of course. He's a healthy scratch, so he'd probably be activated for this game. But I, be. I, I think you're gonna see a, a heavy dose of, of, of Penny. I'm not Penny, but uh, Swift. I think it's a heavy dose of Swift uh, on Thursday. Well, you know what, though? I say that he'll be activated, but. <laughs> They kind of like Boston Scott too. So depending on whatever he did to get in the doghouse, he yeah, still might not get much run. He there only be two backs. He's gonna get activated, but he might not get no run like that. But he's he gonna have to definitely activate him just because they only have those two backs. Aaron Jones is still dealing with a hamstring injury. Um, don't exactly know if he's gonna be able to go on Sunday, but AJ Dillon could take on a workhorse role. How are you feeling about Jones, and how are you feeling about Dylan, Joe? Man, I think with with uh with Dylan first and foremost, I think this is gonna be a good opportunity for him to kind of redeem himself. I mean, he hasn't looking particularly well even in the last game to where you just see what we thought was gonna be the hype trade and him being a hundred, you know, a Henry type. 
you know, going back from a few years ago. I think uh, ultimately when it comes down to Aaron Jones, I think it was a significant injury, but I don't think it's something that he's going to miss several games. But if he was to miss like, two games or so, I think that would fall in line uh, to what I would think he would do. But I, th- I, th- I think we'll know more so Sunday than we would Friday because he's so, you know, entrenched in the system. He doesn't have to. He could be you – know. Uh, you know, he could do his own like, positional drills and then be good for Sundays. So I think this one go all the way into Sunday, but I wouldn't be surprised if he missed one or two games. Makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, Jerry Judy practice in limited fashion. Um, Brandon Cooks is dealing with a little bit of a knee injury, but he's supposed to be okay. We'll kind of see how that goes. Devontae Parker still limited in practice. Um, now, Devonte Adams is also limited in practice with a foot issue. Now, foot issues that you know they they can get kind of tricky. Um, and and we know this past Sunday, his counterpart Jacoby Myers ended up in um with a concussion. I don't know if y'all saw that hit, but it was a vicious hit that got put on him. Um, I'm not exactly sure if uh I'm well actually I'm pretty sure Myers won't go at least this week. Um, based on based on how that that hit looked, but Devontae Adams, you know those those foot issues can kind of linger or flare up at any point in time. Does this worry you at all, Vander? No, I'm not worried. No, nah. he, he deserved to break. Okay, that's all. <laughs> you got Hopkins uh, missing practice due to an ankle injury. So is that another you know more of the same? You know, kind of a veterans preference kind of a deal going on. Definitely. Same same thing. I actually like Hopkins this week. Um, he got, a, I think, 13 targets last week. Got a good number of yeah. targets. Have a really good matchup. They got the Chargers, right? If I'm not mistaken. I believe uh, so. Just got worked by uh, Tyreek. So, the <laughs> uh, may be a pretty good play this week. Jalen Waddle still dealing with that oblique injury. Um, again, this was the injury that he had coming into the season. So, I don't see it hampering him on Sunday, but he was limited in practice. Um, Allen Robinson is going to, it looks like he's going to take on a key role now with Johnson uh, being out. Deontay Johnson is going to be out with that hamstring injury for multiple weeks. Joe, uh, you brought up the fact that uh, Robinson was already getting a little bit of run. And now with Deontay Johnson being out completely, could Allen Robinson possibly be, you know, a sneaky start? I think, you know, it's, it's still got to go through pickings, but if you needed a flex, like say if you just down on your luck, injuries just sparred your team, I definitely would go with Allen Robinson. I mean, he, he for whatever reason, you know, like going back to, like I said a few days ago, whatever happened with the Rams was just in a, was within itself. He was hurt way into camp going into the season. So we was all puzzled and surprised as to what he was, you know, going dealing with or what was the, Sean McVay thing that he fall out with Sean McVay, but it was a stress right. fracture. But now healthy, and we seen what he looked like in preseason. He's definitely a, at least a, a wide receiver three or flex play if you absolutely need it. Uh, but I, you know, due to injury, I would just still have him on your team if you got room just to have him. I like Kevin. Man. Ah, yeah, the 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 guy that stood out. They talked a lot more about him in last year's camp leading up to the season than they did this year. But Kevin Austin is another young gunner on out there that that may, you know, make a little bit of noise now that uh, Deontay is hurt. Um, Vander, how you feeling about Travis Kelsey this week? I think he's, I think he's trending towards playing. Uh, maybe I'm gonna give him seventy percent. Um, okay, that he should play, uh, but. This 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 is because this injury is not you know it's nothing to frown upon. It could linger a little bit. Uh, maybe an additional week could help, but uh, I know he's gonna want to get out there on that field. So I, I, I'm looking for him to play. Joe, how you feeling about Darren Waller? You know he has that hamstring uh, flare up going on. He was a non participant in Wednesday's practice, which is a little bit more serious um, than you know just been limited. So how we feeling about Darren Waller? Man. Yeah. This is going to be another Sunday. I, I think, you know, he's absolutely mm-hmm. going to be a game-time decision. Uh, it's unfortunate, but, you know, like you said, with these injuries early on in the season, we're going to see a lot of these hamstrings, ACLs, all these different type of leg injuries early on. I think it, I think it's to where he's going to be definitely questionable going into Sunday. 
And that pretty much does it for the news. Let's go ahead and get into Rapid Fire 10. All right, in this edition, Rapid Fire 10. Rapid Fire 10, we got 10 quick questions. We need 10 quick answers. Who do I start this week? Let's go. Firstly, Deion Jackson or Zach Moss? <laughs> Whew, give me Zach. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna go with Zach Moss. I, I think if he's back in there, they're gonna give him they're gonna give him the run. I think Zach Moss can actually be a pretty sneaky player. I mean, they got a pretty good matchup. They got Houston, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't Who, be. Whichever one of them gets the gets the the ball is going to do something with it this week. We got Cam Akers or Tajay Spears. Mm. Now, for those of you that don't know, Tajay Spears ended up getting more carries than Derrick Henry did week one. I don't exactly know how that worked out or why it worked out that way. Um, but let me acres. Let me take acres. Acres got the 49ers, by the way. I, yeah, I, I think I might have to. Go. I mean, and then your boy Kyron Williams ended up out snapping and, and out carrying acres. So I, I think I'm gonna have to go with Spears. I think more so with Spears getting all those extra touches, it was it's more so the game getting behind them than anything else. I mean, why give, you know, Henry 30 totes when you need to do, get it through the air? And then y'all can't even block for a damn through the air anyway. It just I got out of the script. But for him to have more carries than Henry is just, it's, 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 uh, I don't know. I just, no, and then the hurt. fact that uh, the Rams are going up against the 49ers, like, I, I, I don't, I don't think they want to see that defense at all. And not only that, Tajay played every third down that game. So that's something to watch as well. All right, we got DeAndre Swift or Najee Harris. Give me Najee. I'm going to take Swift, especially with game will being out. We got Matt Jones or Sam Howell. I'm going to stay in the flames with my boy Mac. Mm, I, I go with Matt, too. They lost, but Matt actually didn't play bad at all. He didn't play. They just got started slowly. If they got started as quickly as that defense did, I think we would have won that game, to be honest. With you. So we got Amari Cooper or DeAndre Hopkins? Mm. I think I'm going to have to go with Cooper because the Steelers didn't look good at all. All right, I'll go with uh, Hopkins if healthy. We got George Pickens, uh, Puka. I call him Puka Nuka, but <laughs> Nuka, Nuka, Nuka. Give me Puka. Nuka. Look, man, that, that man got 15 targets. I, until Cooper Cup is back, he's he's Stafford's favorite target. And, and, you know, Stafford, once he lock on a guy, he lock on a guy. So give me that, dude. Give me, I'm going to go, give me Pickens. All right, we got Christian Kirk or Kadarius Tony. This is a good question. <laughs> Give me Kadarius. I'll, I'll go. I, yeah, yeah, same here. Same here. And, 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 until um, Christian Kirk shows me something with Ridley on the field, yeah. I'm going to just assume. I mean, he got three targets, man. Like, like I, No. <laughs> Give me Tony. Tony yeah. might have dropped all the balls, but at least he got targets. He actually was out targeted. <laughs> He's actually, actually out targeted by Zay Jones. And actually, I think Zay Jones man ran more route, you know, percentage wise is higher. Um, another thing, you know, Andy Reid tends to when guys kind of mess up the week before, he kind of leans on them the week after. I guess as a confidence. Get the confidence back, yeah. I think Tony may have a big week. I can Probably see it. EFS play. All right, we have Mike Jaseki or Hunter Henry. Okay. And I, I, um, I understand this question. I'm going to tell you why after you finish. I think going to get with the Patriots going against the Dolphins, I think I'm going to end up going with Gaseki just because we're going to have to pass the ball from the beginning of that game to the end of that game. And we don't have very many pass catchers. I know Hunter Henry is the red zone guy, but we're going to need a 
twenty to twenty guy that that's going to be reliable. So I I think that this could be a Gasecki type game. I'll go with Hunter Henry, Hunter Henry in this game. Revenge game, man. So. And last but not least. Yeah, yeah, that is right. I forgot about that. He he was in Miami last year. They might, they might try to give him a little touchdown on his old squad. He should probably at least get one. And last but not least, uh, this is a nice flex one. We got Jameer Gibbs or Brandon Ayuk. Mm. I did read something that said they're going to get Gibbs a little bit more involved, but Ayuk is already involved to the max. And with their matchup against the Rams, the Rams don't have a cornerback to speak of. I can see Ayuk doing something similar this week as he did last week. So give me Ayuk. Yeah, give me Ayuk. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Gibbs got 20 fantasy points this weekend. Mm. So that concludes our Rapid Fire 10. Rapid Fire 10. All right, good people, let's go ahead and get into this week's matchups. Uh, First up, we have the Vikings going up against the Eagles on Thursday. This one is a six and a half point spread, and the Vikings are getting the six and a half. And it's a 49 point over under. So they're looking for it to be a a decently, uh, decent, decent uh, scoring going on in there. Uh, What you got on this matchup, Andy? This is an interesting matchup. Because the Eagles defense, I mean, Jalen Carter, dude was a, a terror. You know what I'm he's saying? He's a man. <laughs> he's the, yeah, he, he should have been picked where he was supposed to have been picked. And I right. can't believe that the other teams let the Eagles do this. But, right. yeah. <laughs> the injury to Bradbury is alarming. With that being said, I think mm-hmm. Slade will probably be keying in on JJ. I How do you think that's going to work out for Slade? I love Jordan Addison. That's who I love this game. Okay. Uh, he, it, it, I can't remember the actual number on the metric, but he was pretty high. Like I think it was his um, maybe yard per route run or something like that, or uh, separation yards or something. And he he was one of the top, like in the in the league out of everybody. I mean, so I love Addison um this week. Uh, I like Swift because I think he's gonna have a lot more volume, especially in the PPR league. But you definitely just play all your Eagles. I mean, Minnesota's secondary is horrible. We just seen Mike Evans do his thing against them. Now they tend to this their slot corner is actually pretty good, but it's the outside corner that has the trouble. So I think AJ Brown have a big game as well. Joe, we got the Packers going up against the Falcons. This is only a one point spread. So they expect for this game to be pretty close. Only a 40 and a half point over under, though. So I don't know how good it's going to be for fantasy. What do you like? What do you don't like? Man, I think this is going to be actually an interesting game. The Packers found the defense. Can we can we all find that kind of crazy? They shut out uh, last week. They t- pitched a really good game. And I think coming into a matchup with Atlanta is going to be even more that easy. I think Ritter only attempted 18 passes last week, and you're not going to do that with Jair able to take out Drake London, even if you did want to pass the ball. I think it's going to be a considerably good game. The uh, Falcons going to take out Drake London. I don't, I don't even think. Yeah, right. He's he's by, by do himself, right? I think it's going to be really interesting because on the other side of it, too, Atlanta played fairly well as well. And I think they're still – but they're still finding the identity. I think, honestly, you got to fire up, you know, your guys, honestly. I think it's still going to be a good game for Brian Roberts uh, – <laughs> not Brian Roberts, for Alagier, of course. I think also, too, you got to take a good look on the other side of the ball. We just spoke on Dylan earlier. Um, the wide receiver group is going to be a question, but we know Musgrave is going to be there. So I had to target somebody on the other end of, uh, as far as the Packers. Definitely look at Musgrave to make, uh, you know, impact. And even Jaden Reed, if he's good to go. I know he's uh, stumbled with injury uh, in last week's matchup. I think it's going to be fairly decent, but it's not much to pick in this game. We got the Raiders going up against the Bills. <laughs> the Raiders are getting nine and a half points. So Vegas is expecting this to be a slobber knocker. Uh, it's a 46 and a half point over under. What do you got on this one, Van? Actually, I think um, Jacobs can actually wake up um, this game. I think, you know, okay. him holding out kind of showed um, game one. We did see Brees Hall had some success on the ground against the Bills. 
uh, Dalvin Cook a little bit of success. Um, I think we could see a big game from Jacobs. Um, I st- let's see if this uh this this slot receiver plays right. If he says, then fire up Hunter Renfro. Could we see the type of guy? You know, I was speaking on this and your um thing about uh your boy, it's your boy who's got the the one got concussion. Myers, Jacoby Myers. He don't catch touchdowns, but when he does, huge game, huge game, right? Um, and I think Jake, I think. Garoppolo's skill set is just more of that type of wide receiver versus the yep. other So I agree. Uh, if he sits, I love Hunter Henry. I think he'd be a sweet play um in this game as well. No, not Hunter Henry. You mean not, um Hunter Renfro. Uh, Renfro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Renfro. If uh, uh, Meyer sits, I like him a lot. You got the Ravens going up against the Bengals, another divisional matchup here. Uh this one is a three and a half point um Three and a half point spread with the Ravens actually getting the money there. Um, this is a 46 point over under. What do you got on this one, Joe? Man, I think this is a fairly interesting matchup. Two two quarterbacks needing to play better. Lamar That's... to me played played decent. But also, too, we I also gotta put respect on Houston defense. Houston defense in the long term, I think, is gonna be really stout. Um, but I think this is gonna be really telling because I think Lamar's going to have to do a lot better. Burrow, obviously, the Browns, really? The Browns? Chase? Hey, don't sleep on the Browns this year, though. Don't sleep on the Browns. We can talk about Burrow messing up, but don't sleep on the Browns this year. James Schwartz got them balling, bro. I'm with you with that one. I think you got to follow up, fire everybody up. Um, I think we're going to see the best Lamar in this game already off the bat. He got, you know, injuries to his tackle position, obviously. You know what I mean? They didn't get it done on the ground either, believe it or not. They did middle of the pack on the ground. Bengals, on the other hand, they, you know, lost their tackle. I think Collins is uh, dealing with – the other one is dealing with injury as well, too. They got to do better. I mean, I think this is going to be a really good matchup early on. Because, um, who else? That's another injury, too. I think it's an injury to the safety position there, too, with the Ravens. This is going to be a good matchup. I think it's going to be a good divisional matchup. Fire up everybody. You got no choice in the matter like this. Um, yeah, I mean, running back, I really think it's so much of a committee between Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. It's just like a wait and see. I'd rather see that to the dust settle. My personal you, you also got to wait and see if it's, if it's Melvin Gordon versus Gus or Hill. So it's definitely a, a wait and see for, for several. You got the Seahawks going up against the Lions. I think <laughs> the Seahawks might mess around. Look, no offense, Joe. No, <laughs> I think the Seahawks might mess around and end up 0-2, man. Um, you got... Uh, five and a half point spread. The Seahawks are getting the money there. A forty-seven point over under. What do we like in this one, man? Aiden Hutchinson. Um, <laughs> I think Seattle will be without both of their tackles, and that Ooh. don't sound like a, a good recipe. Uh, At I, think, all. I think Gino will. Uh, let's let's see. It, it, did Gino turn back into you know? Did the carriage turn back into a pumpkin? You know, did the slipper come off? Because, I mean, the way he played last week against the Rams, who we thought was vulnerable in that secondary, and we didn't see Lockett or McCaff do much. And, and McCaff, he needed to learn how to control his, himself, man. It's, it's the yeah, Royce. he's doing too much, man. For real, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think the Roy's kicking in a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, But he wilding. <laughs> um, but I, I like Detroit, man. I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of Gibbs. Uh, they, but it wasn't really good against the runners all last year. Um, we did see them give a couple scores to Kyron. I think uh, Montgomery gives in the end zone as well. That secondary is not – hell, Puka just tore him up. So I think right. our St. Brown going to be – Oh, man. <laughs> you know, spinning around like the young James Brown um, on them <laughs> this week. So I, I definitely see them losing this game. I'm sorry, Joe, but – Yeah, you saw my face. I got a little sad. Man. <laughs> <laughs> We got the Colts going up against the Texans. This one is only a one-point spread with the money going to the Texans. Uh, only a 39-and-a-half point over-under, so Vegas doesn't expect for very many points to be scored in this game. What we got on this one, bro, Joe? Man, last week, I want to I want to skip the games from last week, man. The thing is, the, uh, I'm getting all the struggle teams, you know, the, another divisional matchup where uh, two quarterbacks, didn't play well, but then their defense played really well. 
relatively well. I think this is a game of a mirror match where they both suffer from the same deficiencies, and then next week they got an opponent that can attack them in the same way. Um, honestly, what I do like, though, Pittman, they, they, they were really versatile how to use Pittman. They moved them all over the field, got them in the slot as well, too. And you can just tell that, that you know, they're committed to getting him the ball. So I think he's – I don't. I'm not confident saying it, but I definitely think you gotta. You gotta definitely look at starting him. Obviously, um, the rookie quarterback too. You gotta give him a start. I just. I'm just tempering my expectations this matchup because again, they're gonna both of them gonna be under the rest this game. And Stroud was no better. I think, but Stroud made up better with uh, getting double digit targets to uh, Woods and then uh, Nick Collins. Mm-hmm. I guess run it back. I think those two definitely going to be able to do that. I think Schultz is going to be a good to go. The running game, I don't. Again, I think I said because it's a mirror match. I don't know about Damian Pierce or whoever they start over there, whether it's Zach Moss, whomever. It's just a mirror match of two uh, good run stopping teams this week. The highest over under of the week is the Chiefs going up against the Jaguars. Yeah. That one is a fifty one point over under, and the Chiefs are. Uh, Giving up three and a half to the Jaguars. What do we like about this one, Vander? Everything. <laughs> it, it, even, even um uh even your boy uh that we just talked about, um uh Christian Kurt. No. Um okay. Kirk, everybody but Kurt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> gotcha. yeah, for sure. I mean, I like Kurt. Don't don't get me wrong. I, I think they're gonna try to get him more involved this game than last. I know. Uh, but I like all the skill positions. I think this is a game, as we talked about earlier, I think Kadarius will have a great game. Uh, we'll see a lot of him. Don't be, but we'll think about the Kansas City Chiefs. You don't know who to play. The only certain thing on this exactly. offense is Mahomes, Kelsey, nobody else. True. Cause Scott you can't Morton, even depend on which running back is going to be. Had, Scott Moore didn't have one point last week, right? You know, Kadarius had a bad week. Did you see Rasheed Rice? He came in. Uh, we Put double digit fantasy points. Right. We just hear a lot of Justin Ross talk. Didn't see him deployed. So MV and this did have MVS. They have the, the kid Watts in there. I mean, so you never know who's gonna get it. Um, so the only thing definite is Mahomes and Kelsey. But on the other side, I like everything that Jazz got going on. Uh really is showing he he is him. Um ETN. I'm su- he got a good bit of carries. I'm surprised the talk been so so lopsided in the offseason. One time they came out and said, We want to say this guy's gonna be a split. Then the coach came out and said, I could see ETN getting 1700 yards rushing. But he has, I think, 17 carries this past week, which I like. Uh so I like all the offensive weapons on the Jaguar side. I think this is gonna be a high scoring of uh, affair for sure. They've been using Tank on the goal line a little bit too. That's really the only thing that they taken away from ETN. I'm um, using Bigsby on the uh, on the goal line. I uh, think got the- and, and I, I like Ingram. We didn't he didn't, okay. we didn't see a whole lot, but the safety position is probably one of the uh, things you want to attack when do come to the Kansas City Chiefs. So I do like him. We got <laughs> the Bears going up against the Buccaneers. This one is a forty and a half point over under, and the Bears are getting two and a half points. Do the Bears bounce back? Do the Buccaneers continue to roll? What you got on this one, Bojo? I think it's the Bears. I ain't even, I'm not gonna over. I'm not even gonna overthink. I think Phil's gonna find a way. Again, there's a two. Well, not even this one. Tampa Bay had played had defense last week. I think that was fairly mm-hmm. impressive. They did give quite a bit up through the air, but for the most part, they kept everything in front of them and kept this game fairly close and competitive. I think uh, as far as the Bears, I think. I'm gonna go back to DJ. I, I, he only had what two targets, two catches. Yes, last week. Like what? They'll get him a lot more involved. This week. Yeah. <laughs> like who? DJ Moore. DJ. But what? Who? Who? I told you gonna follow him to the bathroom. Yeah, Jay. Jay. That's the he. I, I like he, his moxie. He was talking about talk the game too. I love he he real saucy man. I like I like how he talks during the games like, and after the game. Zaire that ain't out really there this week though. <laughs> no, no. Right, this 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 hundred yard hundred yard. Game. Sure. And and he's familiar oh. with his team, right? Because I mean, he just came from the division. Yep, yep. I think it's really good for for DJ. I think also Cole Komet. 
Uh, seeing what Hawkinson was it Hawkinson? Yeah, seeing what Hawkinson just did, even though he had the yards, he had like eight receptions uh, last week for 35 yards. I forget, or somewhere along the line, I know it was 35 yards. Cole Commit can definitely get back and get on the right track this week. Um, as far as the running back position, I, I just, I really, I rather fade that one because we saw a little bit of all three. Uh, Roshan came in kind of towards, they just got him some touches towards the end of the game, but. Based on how he handled it, getting that touchdown in garbage time, so to speak, I think he might get a few touches as well. Going on to the other side of it, I just, honestly, barbecue chicken, give me Goddard, give me, I mean, give me Godwin, give me a, uh, you know, Evans. They gonna have whatever they want. I don't, I don't see nobody as far as in the Bears uh, secondary that can stop those two. I think Mayfield to me is gonna favor Evans because he's the bigger receiver. But we already know that he's going to pepper all of them with enough targets. But I think Evans for sure is going to get a touchdown next week. We got the Chargers going up against the Texans. This is a 45-point over-under and a three-point spread with the Titans. Excuse me, the Chargers against the Titans, not the Texans. Um, and it's a three-point spread, and that is going to the Titans. What you like on this one, Vander? Um, well, when it comes to the Chargers, I don't like their running game against this team. Tennessee do not give up none on the ground. Um, so if Eckler does sit, don't be that guy thinking Kelly gonna get in there and give you RB one production. It's not happening. Um, maybe yeah. receive some balls as possible, but as far as running the ball, definitely not. I like the pass catches because Tennessee gives up a lot to the air. You know what I mean? So I do like uh, Herbert in this game. Uh, Keenan Allen. Hell, I thought Mike Williams is done. He got hurt like in the first half, first quarter, and came back. <laughs> You know how that go. He stay hurt. Like, I mean, he he just one of them guys that I, I refuse to depend on in fantasy. He he can go out and be a fantasy MVP, but he won't be on my team. I I, I can't. My nerves can't take. <laughs> but far as Tennessee, I think Tannehill. This is, could be a game too. Uh, he didn't do anything last week, so maybe he can get it together True. this game. Uh, Burks. This would be a good game for Burks if they can connect. Uh, D Hop as well. Um, and o- Okonkwo, he didn't do much either. So, which I think he's going to have probably Duran James on his neck. So he probably won't get much going. But Facts. I do see Facts. those wide receivers doing something in this game as well. We got another low scoring game between the, uh, as far as the over under is concerned, between the Giants and the Cardinals. This is a 39 and a half. And the Cardinals are getting six points in this one. Is this a cleanup game for the Giants? Do they show that last week? was kind of a fluke or just, you know, week one jitters? Or do we think this is just going to be an ugly game and you don't really want to do much of anything fantasy-wise in this game? What you got, bro? I think in my personal opinion, I think it's going to be an ugly game. I, the ass-whooping, the Cowboys – I mean, the Cowboys is a really good defense. We were talking about it even in the offseason, how all those moves were really going to solidify that team on defense. But there ain't no way you get punched in the mouth like that. And you can't even miss the one point. And I'm not trying to say Arizona had a – I know matchup to matchup week over week is a little bit different, but I got to see it. But obviously you're still going to start Daniel Jones. You're still going to uh, start Barkley especially. I think that was the outlier of it all is Barkley. I think Barkley is matchup proof to where you have to start him game week over week. I think Daniel Jones – can't what be matchup proof based on what he didn't do last week. <laughs> I mean – I hear I can, you, but... I, how can you do anything and they can't and you got four, four turnovers from the quarterback? I mean, okay, the same six, quarterback six, gonna be out there this week, so you can't say your matchup. <laughs> he he's he's not Daniel Jones proof. <laughs> he's not. <laughs> I'm glad you said it exactly. He's not Daniel Jones proof. I think this. I think on the ground and just get him. He has to be the catalyst to get to right the ship with this team. It is no way you you do anything else with this team, especially with the 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 indecision with Waller. I think Waller again is going to go all the way into Sunday. I don't. I think we won't even get a good idea Friday what it's going to be. So we got to really pay attention when it comes to that news. But on the other end, it's just like I don't. You can't really talk about anybody to me on the Cardinals, but I do feel like you know they might stick around in this game a little too long. To where you might you might don't consider them as far as fantasy, but just because they're gonna sit around and linger for too long, you might want to take a shot of. Nah, you can't even. I can't even think about no. I ain't gonna move on. Ain't I mean, nobody. Zach, Zach Ertz got a lot of targets. I mean, if if you're in the pinch at tight end, maybe. I, I mean, I don't. Yeah. He, they, he got targets. He got targets, but he ain't catching. 
is horrible, man. Like, I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> that's all, that's there ain't nobody in the Cardinals. And Connor's nicked up already. So, I mean, honestly, yeah, if I'm Connor, I, I just go ahead and tell him, tell him I'm hurt. Put me on IR. Like, what what, what am I giving my body up for this season? Like, for, for who? Uh, 49ers going up against the Rams. This one is a 44 and a half point over under. And the Rams are getting seven and a half points. Mm. Um, so Vegas is expecting for the 49ers to do a little bit more of what they did last week. Um, what we got on this one? What you got on your squad, Vander? Same thing they did last week. <laughs> yeah, punch through these dudes, man. I, the Rams don't have enough. Um, Anything? <laughs> no. I mean, they got Aaron Donald who's going to show, you know, glimpses. Facts. He's gonna get that pass rush, but hell, we gave up three sacks to TJ Watt last week, and you see, and you see what they got. So that could happen, but at the same time, McCaffrey's gonna do what he does. Are uh, you gonna do what he do? Uh, fire everybody up on the forty nine side. Fire the defense as well, because Absolutely. even we've seen Puka do his thing. Um, we've seen Atwell have some big catches as well, but this is a different secondary. Um, Facts, and so. 49ers I would old. temper my expectations on Puka this week too, going up against the 49ers. So yeah, yeah. But like you said before, you know, Matthew, they gotta throw the ball because they're probably gonna be playing from behind. Yeah. So they gotta throw the, the whole ball. Game, yeah. I can see this being a decent game for Higby, actually. Like you said, I gotta throw the ball to somebody, but I can see based on what Puka did last week, I can see them saying you could throw it to somebody, but it won't be him. Um that's just kind of how Shanahan, you know, Ooh. tends to at that point. We'll, we'll kind of see how that rocks. Uh, the... and, and sit, and I, I'm not comfortable playing Acres. I'm not playing comfortable playing Kyron. No, um, nah, not like this one defense. Right. So, no. All right, Joe. Uh, this one gonna be real quick. You got the Cowboys going up against the Jets. It's a 38 <laughs> point over under, and the Cowboys probably gonna get all 38 of them points. What you got in this one, man? I definitely think. Um... Next week, I should have uh, more better games. Um, <laughs> but, but I think, you know, honestly, believe it or not, I think, honestly, like you said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down how it's going to go down. I think this, what they did to Daniel Jones is copy and paste and put that on Zach Wilson. Now, honestly, as talented as we know uh, Garrett Wilson to be, I think Diggs is going to get the, the follow him to the bathroom, um, you know, type of treatment and get that to Wilson. I think – this is an easy game, like you said. I don't think they can muster much anything. I do respect the Jets' defense, but I just think the balance and what they have in, with this offense, they're they going to beat them. With, eventually, Pollard within itself is going to break free and do something, whether it's passing, receiving, you know, whatever. He just has the repertoire to do it. And just, I just like the weapons a lot more to where I know it's the Jets, but we saw Reed get cooked. We even saw Sauce get put in the blender with this past week. A little bit in a few times that they they're beatable. And I think so let me ask you this is, though: mm-hmm. Do you think that the Jets have the defense that can expose that? Because honestly, as good as their defense was, their offense really wasn't anything to write home about last week. And Dak is no Josh Allen. Maybe the Jets can stick around in this thing just based on what they can do to the offense. Like, what, what do you think about that prognosis? Also. How do you think um, Cook and Hall will fare against the Cowboys? The Cowboys have a great pass rush, but they can be ran on a little bit. So how, how do you think that will end up matching up? And I think that's, that's – if it's an area of opportunity, it is going to come from the Jets' running game. I think um, the thing is with them is that they went and had and got mid, uh, Smith that I was telling you about in the draft, and that boy is nasty. That was, I think – he really sets the tones in the, which allows Parsons to kind of move around a lot more to not be a liability. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. Parsons is night and day. We didn't see all the sacks, but the pressures and everything else they was able to generate this past week. The defense as a whole, I think it's going to be something really good to watch because Brees can do it. He, they can get it done, but also, too, Cook can definitely get it done. But pressure beats anything. And having somebody like Zach Wilson back there is just like, it's nothing really to write home about when they're going to send the kitchen sink at you. And if Josh Allen, you know, Josh Allen is one thing, but Daniel Jones, if we just saw what happened. I think it's a copy and paste. To me, if Daniel Jones, who's a more proficient passer, got beat up like that, 
just copy and paste. But what I will say on the other end, as far as the retort with the, the Jets, I love the Jets defense. I'm not saying that the Jets defense is just is somebody you can walk on, you just catch catch slipping. But I think the way I think attrition is the only one thing that's going to beat them. I think as long as they're going to be out in the field is what's going to get the Jets over time. Because this game is going to be punt, 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 possible field goal. And I think the attrition of just being on the field that long, you're going to make mistakes. And I think that's the part where I think Cowboys can pull ahead. We got the Commanders going up against the Broncos. This is a 38-and-a-half point over under, and the Commanders are getting three-and-a-half points. So what do you got on this one, Vanny? This game here is, like, extremely tricky, um, especially when it comes to a fantasy aspect. Um, right. I didn't like what I seen out of Terry McLaurin last week. I think that guy's hurt. Um, Herf turn don't go away in a week. I'm yeah. sorry. I really think he he's he's hurt, um, but the Denver Broncos is a good defense. Washington actually played pretty good. Well, I don't know if Washington's a good defense or just the Cardinals just that bad, right? Um, Facts. But the surprising thing, Javonta Williams, um, he he looked pretty good. He did, yeah, he looked pretty good. I'm surprised to see him. It was like an even split. I think him and P Ryan, um, and both of them put up fantasy numbers. They did. They did. Uh, Russ is he's Russ. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, he, he didn't look he didn't look terrible, but uh, we we still waiting to see if the real Russ stands up. Uh, I'm kind of staying away from guys in this game to be honest with you. I'm not really a fan of anyone in this game. Uh, just like you know the game we just spoke about, Jets and Cowboys. Not really a fan. I mean, you got to play pilot, right? But um, in this game, I just think. There's not one person that stands out to me fantasy wise, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta play this dude. Um, so I think if you're playing a DFS, I would just stay away from everybody. But again, in your leagues, you gotta play Javante because he shows some promise. Uh, as well as the uh, Gibson surprised me; he didn't do much last week as well. Um, you know, he Ryan fumbled, Robinson. and then they didn't let him do nothing else after that. And Robinson, <laughs> and, 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 and Robinson didn't do a whole lot, but he did catch a touchdown. Um, so that showed me that they are comfortable with him throwing him the ball. Um, it's something that we didn't really see from him uh, last year at all. So, um, but this right, game, I'm, I'm not touching much at all. The Sunday night game, the Dolphins going up against the Patriots. This is a 46 and a half point over under, and the Patriots are actually getting three points at home. So that's kind of telling as far as w which direction uh, Vegas is kind of seeing this one go. What you got on this one, bro, Joe? I like this game, man. I think it's going to be a fairly intriguing game. Starting with the Patriots. Give me – I think you're you going to get Stevenson. Yeah, I think Zeke – this is how much that embarrassing much, – as much of an embarrassment it was last week watching the Chargers do what they did. You could fire up Zeke this week. <laughs> like, I think they're going to go crazy. You tell them, like – I like Eckler. I respect Eckler. I, I like Joshua Kelly. But Ramondre's skill set is a you know, pass catcher and a running back. Zeke, you gonna give them that much, you know, space, you know. I you could you could you I could have ran I could have ran for 50 yards. Like I think it, it's gonna be a really good game uh, for that fact alone. We know that you know on the Patriots side of the ball, though they do have, you know, a little bit of injury going on. Bourne definitely played relatively well. We got to go back to Bourne. We got to go to somebody. Um, I think, the, obviously, the tight ends are going to be in a good predicament. I think it's going to be a, a shift in pace, whereas, you know, last week it was a up and down, back and forth. I don't think it's going to go that way. I think, you know, Patriots always play within themselves. They play their opponents on defense relatively stern. I think it's going to be a methodical game. But if you let Miami have the opportunity to get ahead, they're going to put the foot on, you know, the pedal to the metal, so to speak. And go then that's when they're gonna run up down the field. But give me uh you know you said remind Ray Z, give me the you know, all the weapons on the Patriots, you know, that are healthy. I gotta say that. Um, but then on the other end, I mean it's, you can almost say the same thing. Even if they don't go have the tempo that they had last week, um well, I think y'all might be the ones that could knock uh two out. Um you still gotta start them until injury. <laughs> um so this is one where we What's might have to have we might to the west side. <laughs> <laughs> the west side. Oh, ain't no joke, bro. Oh, yeah, look. 
Woo, this is gonna be a serious game. I hope Tua is they're gonna have to have somebody ready for Tua on the sideline. I think he's gonna do relatively well. Waddle's gonna do well, Tyree's gonna do well. Uh the the question is most star. I know um a chain was a healthy a scratch last week, but due to injury, I think he might have to see some type of volume on the field. But again, the Patriots play defense so well, it's hard to get behind a running back. But the wide receivers and Tua, definitely, definitely. But I would. This is one of the situations I'll take a play out of Vanderbilt. I'm gonna have Mike White I'm adding him during the game before the game starts. <laughs> I got to. We, we got the Saints going up against the Panthers. This is a 39 and a half point over under. And I believe that's due to uh, Vegas thinking that this is going to be a little bit of a, a party with the Saints. Um, but it's only a three-point spread. We'll kind of see how that goes. What you got on this one, Vanny? It's an ugly game as well. Um, and this is it's two Monday night games, by the way, just in case y'all didn't know. And and I don't know why they're doing this. But one starts what? at 7-15, the other one starts at 8-15. So you're going to have to pick and choose, I guess. I what you got you, on this one? I told you Jamal Williams wasn't good. That's for one. Um, uh, I I I think I I think the Panthers will make him look good. The the Panthers defense is not that bad. It, it ain't that good either. You got you got to remember. Um, Horn, uh, Horn is hurt. Yeah, and when I when like that so. secondary is banged up, they, they tend to lose focus for whatever um, reason. Man, I really don't want to touch anybody in this game, man. I'll be honest with you. I, I really don't. Um, I think there's so many better options out there. But if JC JC Horn is out, I guess you would have to go with it's so Olave. Oh, but Olave was banged up a little bit as well. Um, he finished it, the game. He was good. It seems like um Carr has a pretty good uh chemistry with uh Rashid as well. Yeah. Ooh, I would Facts. play him in this game. I think I like him. Uh on the other side, Saints is really usually really good against the run. Um, so I'm not a fan of Sanders getting off doing doing much as well. Uh, Bryce Young is he's going through a learning curve. Um, with, yeah. Um, so um, and he's going through it not having an O line curve. Yeah, offensively, I'm not a fan of anybody in the Panthers. Uh, so that's why this game is three points. It's probably going to be pretty ugly. Maybe one of them uh, thirteen divisional games. So 13, yeah, 10, you know, something like that. So from a fantasy aspect. No, if you have some replacements in your league that you can play over these guys, please do. But I know where you drafted Olave, you got to play him. Um, and most guys probably have to play David Carr as well. But other guys, you might want to just be able to find some other pieces to fill in. Last matchup, we got the Browns going up against the Steelers, and this will be the 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 normal Monday game. Uh, at eight fifteen, this one is a thirty-eight and a half point over under. So Vegas is basically telling us that it's going to be some low fantasy scores this week, and uh, you might not have to put up the the normal average amount of points that you would have to to win a game this week. So you might want to put in the players that that you know are solid versus kind of going for the gusto this week. But what you got on this matchup, Joe? Yeah, I I agree with you off the bat. I'm only interested in pickings, and I'm getting out there. I don't even want fire moves like that because after we still seen what the Browns do, I do see, you know, I don't take a one week as being one week, but this defense, look, they look cohesive. They came to play, and that front line, it looked nasty, man. It looked real nasty. <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's a divisional matchup. It's going to get scrappy yep. as is. And I don't think as of yet the Steelers have the identity to kind of really – Make this a competitive game, if that makes sense. I really think – Makes a whole lot of sense. Pickings. Yeah. You got to give it to Pickens, and you got to just fade, you know, the Steelers, but then on the other side of the ball, I want to know how uh, Hurt is Coop. Because Coop played, I think, majority of the game, but he, he – is he, whatever element is bothering him, I want to see uh, going into Friday what that looks like or even if we – you know, what updates we get between now and Friday. But if not, I think Elijah Moore, he was heavily targeted in his offense right off the bat. And if this game is to slightly remain competitive, it's going to be off of, obviously, Chubb, who's going to be a pivotal part. Everybody know to start Chubb. Deshaun ran the ball a lot last game. I think um, Elijah, Chubb, and then Deshaun, I mean, that's about it. I don't want to trust nobody else in me on either offense like that. And obviously, I said Pickens as far as Steelers. 
And that will pretty much wrap it up for us for this week. We will be back to you on Monday, giving you your waiver wire picks and a kind of weekly wrap up, if you will. But for this evening, we out. Thank you.